this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore a PDP 1134A vintage computer. In the video so far in this series I've been through the basic machine, I got it booting up but I was having lots of problems and uh, ultimately I got to the point now where I need to deal with problems that are being caused by the backplane. It's making the whole machine behave in a very flaky manner. I move boards, touch it, and it, it crashes and uh, Having looked at this under a microscope, I found all sorts of problems with it that I pointed out in the previous video. Now before I get started on this, I just want to point out I'm not in any way trying to criticise the DC design here. Um, this machine was never intended to be working 40 years later and the design was perfectly adequate uh, for the time. Um, but because these are being resurrected, it's a problem that started to come up and it will just get worse. It's caused by corrosion and breakdown of the solder joints and wire wrap connections on the underside of the backplane. That's going to get worse and affect more and more machines. So it would be nice to have a long-term solution for this. And that's something I'll come back to later in the video. And I'll be asking for your feedback and ideas on uh, the best way to go about doing that. Um, but before then, I want to just um, show how I go about testing this. It's not as difficult or time consuming as it may appear, um, at least not once you get organised. Um, uh, what I've done here is make up this small adapter and it allows me to connect to any one of the Unibus pins or in fact any one of the pins in any of the connectors. So I'll just plug it in uh, to one of the slots and then I can connect my multimeter to one of the connections, some little uh, sockets on here, and then I can probe the back plane to see where that uh, connection goes to. So just bear in mind we have the uh, slots A, B, C, D, E and F. A is the one in this case on the right next to the uh, power connectors and then the rows are numbered from the front one, two, three up to nine. The pins are labelled with letters from the right and then each connector has a front and back which is given a number. So you might get something like uh, E01P1. So in that case that would be slot E, which is uh, obviously what the E stands for. The O1 is row 1 and then the P1 is pin P and 1 is at the front, 2 is at the back. So in this case it would be uh, E, pin P, the pin at the front. So it's, it's quite straightforward, it's very easy to uh, find pins once you understand the basic way that they're identified. Uh, however, to save myself a bit of time, what I tend to do is put these little uh, marker uh, papers at the back. They just slot in, just the, things like this. It just slots in between the uh, connector and the metal housing. And it just saves you having to count it up each time. It uh, saves a lot of time. Um, what I then do is I connect the multimeter to one of the pins. In this case, I'm going to connect it to the first one, so this is pin A1. I then look to see what the signal is, in this case it's in it L. We've got seven rows to test, I won't be testing the two front CPU ones like this because they're all kind of custom uh, connections between the first two rows, so it's just the uh, rows three upwards that we're interested in. So I have a sheet for each of the rows and what I then do is look at the connector, so we know it's in NIT L, find it on this um, connection chart, in this case it's showing me it's row D, pin L1. So we'll then find that, so D, which is uh, this slot, L and 1, so we know that one's fine. I'll go through the rest, make sure they're all okay. So there's no point in the front two because they are different. So they're all fine for that particular connection. I'll then cross it off on each of the sheets. Green for good, red for bad. I don't stop each time I find a bad one. There's so many that uh, it would be constantly stopping and starting. So I go through the entire thing. If it's bad, I'll use a red marker and I mark it off on all of the sheets because obviously we've tested uh, all of the slot, all of the rugs. What I then do is move on to the next pin 
so we've already done one pin so in this case we're looking for uh, INTR low do the same thing find that on the back plane buzz it out mark it off good or bad move on to the next one once I've done A I pull it out put it into B and then uh, just continue the little uh, indicators just make it very quick and easy to find uh, which pins which incidentally I do something very similar when I'm working on the underside uh, it's again very easy to get lost on the underside there are so many pins as long as you have good uh, identifiers it's uh, very quick and easy to do so once I've been through the entire thing I then have to try and find a solution in this case it's I would deem it to be a, a short-term solution it's not a proper fix um, but uh, I need to try and get this working so I can assess the boards a bit more fully uh, so I if it's a wire wrap wire that's um, at fault it's fairly easy to change I'll just take out the old one disconnect one end of it put the wind the new wire on find the other end of it and then um, identify it take the wire off and then rewrap it so it saves me having to kind of look up what the numbers are let's do one end at a time uh, so that's very quick and easy to do it takes probably a minute to replace each wire um, what's trickier are the solder connections and that's where um, that's why I'm deeming this to not be a long-term fix uh, I repair quite a few of uh, this type of machine that has very similar wire wrap connections on the back so soldering them can be a problem and especially on this board because there's well, I didn't mention it previously there's a plastic sheet that is on the underside of the wire wrap wires so if you imagine there's that kind of a perforated sheet that uh, is sitting between the wires and the PCB now the holes in it are quite big so you can just about get through it but not with a soldering iron and um, it, if you get a, a solder iron that's fine enough to go in there it's, it won't have the heat to heat the pin up to solder it properly so what I do instead is I've got a number of um, bits that I use as I said I do quite a few of these so over time I've kind of developed a, a method for doing this this is not for my standard uh, soldering iron the one I normally use because they use very specific uh, bits that you can't drill into because the heaters uh, the elements in and the sensors inside the actual uh, tip itself so this is just a cheap standard type soldering iron um, but I drill out the tip and I've got another back plane here so drill out the tip and then that will slide over the pin so it's a quite a, a tight fit on the pin that will heat up just the pin and that particular solder joint and what I can then do of course is just feed solder down into the joint and it, it gives you very good heating of just that pin and allows you to get quite a good uh, solder joint can't remove the old solder as long as you use a bit of flux in there it does seem to retake reasonably well if the pin looks badly corroded I clean it up first as best I can and um, then try soldering it check it under a microscope and these are resoldering reasonably well I've been through it once and I found I think 142 bad connections or intermittent connections went through the first time resoldered that I think I changed something like 22 wire wrap wires and um, went through it again and I found four connections still not right went through did it again I'm about to go through and try it again but I'm getting closer now to the point where I can at least reinsert the boards and see uh, what other issues still exist uh, it takes about an hour and a half to test this each time so it's not particularly time consuming once you've done it a few times um, it is a bit tedious uh, but at, I do not think this is a long-term fix I think just more and more joints will start to fail so that comes on to the second point of uh, this video that's a longer term fix so I'll just turn this over and we'll see what the problems are so we've got all these pins and they sit on a PCB so there's a plastic sheet between the wire wrap uh, wires and the PCB um, so the PCB carries some signal wires and a lot of the power that goes up and down the um, the back plane now the best solution would be or the nicest solution uh, would be to just make up a replacement PCB the problem there of course is you 
then have to try and source some connectors. And as these connectors have digital equipment corporation uh, moulded into them, I'm assuming these are manufactured specifically for DEC, so I, I really don't hold that much hope of finding any alternatives for these. Now, we could, if we're doing the brand new board, use a different type of connector, but one of the problems that these connectors overcome by virtue of their design, if you ever designed large long PCBs, you'll know that they have a tendency to bow one way or the other. And especially when you solder them, you reflow them, whatever, they'll tend to change. And uh, they may have been flat originally, but they'll have a curve. This back plane overcomes the slight curve in these long boards. And if you've got a hex board, it's actually quite long. Um, because they've got a very wide V. Excuse, excuse the noise. So the entry point for the connector is actually very wide. It's kind of a V shape and it captures the end of the board and guides it into the proper um, entry point for the connector. More usual connectors don't have that. They've got a very narrow entry to their channel and they do that because they don't want a big tall connector. Now these are very tall because the first part of the connector is not really part of the connector, it's just the, the entry V, which is why the connections are so deep in there. Uh, so a standard connector wouldn't really be suitable for this. Now one way around this is um, it would be fairly easy to make up some 3D printed housings that standard connectors go inside. So we'd have something that looks a bit like this from the outside, but inside would be more standard connectors and then the 3D printed housing would fulfill the guide function as well as supporting the connector. So we could do that. If we're going for custom connectors, then there are a couple of options. We could go for wire wrap connections and then you'd still have to uh, wire wrap them, which is, it's not an insurmountable task, but it's very tedious and long-winded and very error prone. Um, incidentally, if you are doing this, what I do is I run a bit of um, coloured wire down through the uh, every fourth row of pins. Because the pin, the way this is organised, you've got this pin, this one, this one, this one, this one, so they're staggered for a particular row. So these are all the front row, and then the next two pins down, staggered again, are for the back row of the first connector. And that um, essentially means it's quite easy to get lost in here as to what particular row you're looking at. So what I do is just run a wire down between all the way along. So it's very easy then to um, tell one connector from another and which particular pin you're looking at. Uh, but as I said, wire wrapping this is a bit of a tedious task now. If we're going to the trouble of making a new PCB, it could of course be a four layer PCB, in which case uh, all these wire up connections could be incorporated into the board. Now the difficulty or the issue with this is not all these back planes are the same. So it would have to be one of the back planes, it would be too much of a, an expense to do, both in time and money to do one for each of the different types of backplane that are available. And it would of course have to be the CPU backplane, there's no point doing the other backplane because if this one doesn't work then the whole machine doesn't work. Now that same board could be used to repair something like this because if all the connections are there then all you really need to do is to take all the existing wire wrap off there slide the new board over the pins and then so it's just maybe halfway down the pins and then solder all the connections you could in theory leave the wire wrap there but it's best to take it off because if one of the wires breaks then it could uh, short out on something so that's another option could be used to use the same connectors but have all the connections duplicated on the new board and just use it in tandem with the existing board you could of course opt to desolder all the connectors and um, just swap the entire board but I think that would be a bit of a difficult task and you most likely would damage the connector. So they seem to be the best solutions to go for. My 
personal preference is to go for a new board that contains all the required connections for the CPU backplate. The problem here is one of time and cost. It would take maybe a month's work to do that, which I'm quite happy to do, but the cost of a four layer board of this size, uh, even uh, initial prototyping, is going to be quite high and then you've got the issue of testing it. Um, so that's buzzing it out, testing it, running it in multiple machines. So I don't at the moment have a working machine in which to test the new board. So I always test anything I produce. And um, in this case, I need to get this machine working first, which is why I'm going through this process. So really now I would like some uh, feedback uh, from yourselves. Uh, which of those options do you think is most preferable? So we have various different ways of looking at it, of course. Is, are we being true to the original design? Uh, are we just trying to cobble something together to get them working? And it's just finding a solution that uh, would suit uh, most people, or the widest uh, possible audience. So what is your preference? Um, have you any other ideas as to ways that um, this could be done if we're going to the time and trouble of recreating replacements? Um, as I say, what, what would your preference be? It would be nice to have a longer term solution so that uh, we can future proof these machines. It would also be nice to try and keep the originality of them. I don't really like um, the idea of completely redesigning this. I don't think it would look right. Um, so, as I say, feedback on that would be welcome. If you've got any ideas, then please let me know.